A violent weekend across the U.S. Nearly 50 people hurt or killed in mass shootings, including one in New York that authorities say was racially motivated. This is someone who has hate in their heart, soul, and mind. We have a lot of street robberies. We have a lot of burglaries. We have a lot of uh, assaults. Aurora is taking steps to reduce crime in the city by giving businesses the tools they need to stay safe. It's just very difficult to come up with that huge money for the right security system. And the Biden administration is announcing steps to make housing more affordable. Plus, the Avs say they're ready for round two against the Blues. We needed a couple days for rest. They're back at it after a week without a game. Now that we've had those days, we're ready to go. It's been a violent weekend across the U.S. More than a dozen people are dead after mass shootings in four cities, Milwaukee, Buffalo, Houston, and Los Angeles. Thanks so much for joining us for Denver 7 News at 11. I'm Jason Grenauer. Now, the shooting in Buffalo left 10 people dead when a gunman opened fire inside a grocery store. Authorities say the attack was a racist hate crime. We have a live look now from the store right now. Investigators are still out there processing that large and complex crime scene. As Rena Roy reports, police say the suspect had plans to kill more people if he hadn't been stopped. FBI investigators scouring through evidence after 10 people were gunned down in this top supermarket in an attack officials say was driven by racist hate. This is an absolute racist hate crime. This is someone who has hate in their heart, soul, and mind. 18-year-old Peyton Gendron, now behind bars, charged with murder. Police say he drove hours from his home to allegedly target this predominantly black neighborhood with a detailed plan to kill, wearing military fatigues and opening fire Saturday afternoon, shooting at least 50 rounds and live streaming the massacre. Employee Yania Brown McReynolds decided to hide as gunshots rang out. I was frozen. In time, I literally couldn't move. I heard all the gunshots. I heard all the, the bodies fall. Others never got that chance. The community coming together to remember the 10 whose lives were stolen. 86-year-old Ruth Whitfield killed. We're very, very close family. Um, and my mother was the glue that held us all together. Retired police lieutenant Aaron Salter Jr., who was working as a security guard at the store, losing his life after bravely taking on the shooter, allowing others to escape. I know people in this city will never forget what he did. As Gendron sits in jail on suicide watch after pleading not guilty, authorities now digging into his past, including alleged extremist views posted online and a 180-page document fixated on replacement theory. A white supremacist conspiracy seeking to blame Jews that believes non-whites will replace white people. The text also praising other mass shooters. Authorities also saying he had plans to continue his attack. It appeared that uh, his plans were to drive out of here looking to uh, shoot more black people, um, as he put it. And many are frustrated about some red flags that may have been overlooked, including the suspect's social media posts and previous threats of violence that he's made. Rena Roy, ABC News, Buffalo, New York. Denver City Council will vote tonight on changing concealed carry restrictions. Now, this has gone back and forth between city rules and then state law when it comes to parks. Tonight's discussion will also include city buildings. The city council is also considering adding more halo cameras. Police rely on them to get a first look at a crime scene. The council will discuss whether or not to approve nearly one and a half million dollars for installation and maintenance of more cameras. Right now, the city has close to 260 of these cameras in public areas. Aurora is launching a program today aimed at increasing safety and reducing crime in neighborhoods. Denver 7's Christian Lopez tells us how it all will work. Starting today, eligible businesses, community groups, and nonprofits can apply for $10,000 grants, and this money can be used to purchase things like cameras, lights, alarms, or other security enhancements. The city will send out an officer to help small businesses determine what's needed. This is all part of the Aurora Safety and Security Grant Program. The money is coming from the American Rescue Plan. It's funds the city received during the pandemic. $3 million is available citywide, but there's $500,000 set aside specifically for businesses that are near East Colfax. 
Sarah Erks, who owns the bong shop, says she plans to apply because they've dealt with break-ins recently. I believe we will be um, trying to get some help with the security. And beyond that, we're just taking other precautions in here. We don't leave cash in our store at night. We no longer leave vape pens in our store at night because it's an easy, um, you know, grab. We have to um, remove stuff and put it in safes now and it all takes more time, but we're trying to protect our assets. There have been a lot of break-ins and so we are trying to find a way to help these small businesses kind of deter thefts in their areas. Applications opened at 8 o'clock this morning. For more information on how to apply for this grant program, just go to our website, thedenverchannel.com. Reporting this morning, I'm Christian Lopez, Denver 7. Aurora is also developing a plan to reduce youth violence. Tonight, the City Council will discuss a few changes to the proposal, including taking into account how risk factors like drugs will be addressed by program leaders. They'll also discuss funding. Half a million dollars is budgeted for services and 30 partner agencies applied to get some of that money. Governor Jared Polis is signing several bills into law today designed to save Coloradans money. Those bills include ones to cut property taxes, expanding the middle income access program to help people with affordable housing and help employers retain jobs. He'll also sign a bill that moves nearly $4 million from the general fund to keep driver's license fees the same price. The Biden administration is set to announce several ways to increase affordable housing. The White House notes that housing prices are a key driver of inflation when home prices, with home prices rising nearly 20 percent year over year in February. Now, some of the proposals include improving federal financing for manufactured homes and multifamily units. The administration will also encourage governments to reform zoning policies and direct more affordable homes to local owner occupants instead of investors. The White House ho hopes that these initiatives will close the housing supply shortage over the course of five years. Data from Rent.com shows how expensive it is to find an affordable place to live in Denver. The average rent price for a studio apartment is more than $1,700 a month. A one-bedroom is $2,100, and a two-bedroom is more than $2,600 a month. Now, we've done several 360 in-depth stories on Colorado's housing market and skyrocketing prices. You can find our coverage right now. That's up on the DenverChannel.com. People in Denver's Athmar Park neighborhood say RVs are taking over the area and neighbors are asking the city for help. Homeowners living near Aspgren Park say people living in the RVs are causing problems. There have been fights among campers and police have been called several times. We're just asking for someone to take some accountability and, and step up and um, you know, create a system where, where the people can get help that they need and that residents can also feel safe at the same time. Now, we reached out to the Department of Housing Stability. A spokesperson says they are aware of the concerns and they're working to make sure outreach teams are servicing that area. They're also assessing whether or not a cleanup is necessary in that area. And when it comes to cleaning up homeless encampments, Denver police are no longer required to give a seven day notice before a sweep. A U.S. Court of Appeals overturned that requirement earlier this month. City officials say they plan to give notice as a courtesy. Regis University is moving its safe outdoor space. It's moving to land owned by the St. Francis Center in Denver's Barnum neighborhood. It will open in June and offer shelter for up to 60 people. The St. Francis Center says it will develop the land into affordable housing. A Cap Hill family says police never showed up to help catch a man they say tried to steal a bike from their backyard. Laura LaRoe ran outside when she saw a man breaking into their backyard yesterday. She screamed to scare the suspect and get the neighbors, her neighbor's attention. Her husband and neighbors chased down that would-be thief, but after calling 911, they say the police never showed up. Our neighbor said that they were, that they called 911 and um, there was, you know, pol police officers were, were busy and we were, uh, we were going to be kind of down the list on what they were going to get to. Got to be probably 45, 50 minutes where I was like, well, we have to go to my kids' baseball game. So I was like, I'll see you later. Now we reached out to DPD to see why an officer didn't respond and we did not receive a response. 
Five billion dollars in federal aid is coming to cities and other communities to reduce traffic deaths. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg says this is part of the Biden administration's Safe Streets and Roads for All program. The goal is to encourage cities to adopt detailed plans that would slow down cars, build bike paths and wider sidewalks, and encourage public transportation. The White House says data shows traffic deaths are soaring in the U.S., as well as deaths among pedestrians and cyclists. CDOT wants to expand bus staying service along I-25 and I-70. Colorado Public Radio reports that CDOT's proposal would add two daily round trips to each of its main bus staying routes this summer. Now, buses would make as many as 15 daily trips between Denver and Grand Junction by 2024 and 13 daily trips between cities along the Front Range. CDOT wants to expand its service to reach its goal of reducing greenhouse gas emissions as well as air pollution. The waiting game is over. We finally know when the Avs Blues playoff series will start, and that will be tomorrow night at Ball Arena for Game 1. When the Avs take the ice, it will be their first game in eight days, and the first in five days for the Blues. Now, the Avs have been practicing, including getting some skating in yesterday. Players say while it's good to have a break, you can only do so much in practice to keep that intensity up, and waiting to play, that's the hardest part. Just trying to stay fresh and making sure that like when we're doing five on five drills and that we're competing hard against one another to test ourselves a little bit so we keep our edge. When you come to the rink, um, just that business like attitude where everybody goes to work and then still have a fun time, but uh, make sure that, like I said, we're, we're ready to go and stay in shape. So here's a look at the first four games of that Avs Blues series. Game one is 7.30 tomorrow night at Ball Arena. Game two is Thursday night. Then games three and four are Saturday and next Monday out in St. Louis. Well, coming up, JetBlue is trying to stop Spirit Airlines from merging with Frontier. Plus, NATO is about to get more members, and the Kremlin is responding now that its border will see a bigger NATO presence.